Okay, and if if it if it breaks up again, guys, st- stop me and we'll start again. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go in three, two, one. And we're back on this Saturday morning, Sports Medicine Weekly. Steve Cashel, Dr. Brian Cole. Time now for our Ask the Doctor segment, giving our listeners the opportunity to have Dr. Cole address their specific sports injury issues. It's very easy to submit a question. Just go to our website, sportsmedicineweekly.com. On the home page, you will find a link underneath the photo of Dr. Cole and yours truly. On the right side of that home page, click on that link and you can submit your question. Dr. Cole, got a couple of great ones for you on this Saturday, and uh, this first one, I'm very interested as well because this impacts me. Uh, Dr. Cole is an athlete. I am nervous about losing muscle during this time since I don't have access to heavy weights for training as all the gyms are closed. How long does it take to lose muscle mass? Well, Steve, I'll tell you this, that as you and I age, especially over the age of 40, if we did nothing meaningful, we will lose about 8% of our muscle mass per year. But we're all looking at this hopefully over a much shorter timeline. So I would say that, you know, you're not going to lose a lot of muscle strength over the next three or four weeks. But one thing that will for sure happen is you're going to lose your cardio endurance even within a few days. And you may have already noticed that if you're not doing cardio. So a lot of this depends upon your sort of pre-break, if you want to call it COVID, pre-COVID, fitness level, if that's when you started, uh, you know, uh, loosening the reins a bit. Uh, and that really has a big influence on, on how long it takes for you to lose or regain your, your fitness level. Now, those who are athletes who exercise five to six days per week over a year, they probably would be the longest to lose their muscle math, mass in a, in a meaningful way if they stop working out. Uh, I think you and I probably have a lot more to lose quicker just because our intensity and our frequently and our frequency is not as significant as athletes who really lose less overall muscle mass uh, when they take breaks than sort of the true non-athletes. So those are some of the, the, bottom, the, the, the bottom line, I guess I would say, is that you're not going to lose a lot of muscle mass overnight, even if you can't train at the same level or capacity. Maintaining a base, of, uh, base level of training can still be very beneficial, and you can use body weight to do those things. And I would say anything you can do, Steve, even with body weights, with bands and so forth, Despite not having uh, heavy weights, you can do a good job over the next three, four, five, six weeks to maintain your capacity. Very good. Can't wait for the uh, training centers and the gyms to get back open. Bottom line, thank you. Dr. Cole, second question here from one of our listeners. Can you talk about the antibody uh, testing project with the MLB? How is MOR, Midwest Orthopedics at Rush, participating? This is an unprecedented study. I'll tell you, I do uh, or participate in at least 30 clinical trials or research studies a year. And this one was one that I've never seen happen in such an expedited fashion. The MLB was approached and uh, through partnering with Stanford and USC, a clinical study looking at a blood test where you just have a finger stick that can tell you within a matter of minutes if you have had the COVID virus based upon your antibody formation. So this is what we call a a prevalence test, Steve. It's basically looking at the number of people uh, in this population of 10,000 people who actually test with antibodies to show that they were exposed uh, and were infected with the virus. And essentially they use the the MLB as a conduit. 27 of the 30 teams are taking part of this nationwide study trying to get 10,000 people. It can be the front desk people, it can be the concessions people, it can be players, it can be the team physicians. Any people that they could get access through through the conduit of the MLB are included, including myself. And this study basically will be completed by Friday. And we had about 100 White Sox employees that were tested. Uh, Nick Verma did a wonderful job, my partner, the head team physician for the Sox, in getting this initiated and successfully performed uh, as, uh, 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 as over this last week, we've utilized all of these tests. So it's the, the real trick of this is what are we going to do with the information uh, once we know how prevalent it is for people in a large population with various risk categories, say 10,000 people, how common is it that they will test positive for the antibody? And also, this is not an FDA-approved test, so we are still working on the accuracy, the sensitivity of it, and the specificity of it. 
Very good. And our final question in our Ask the Doctor segment, Dr. Cole, what is prone positioning and how is it being used to help COVID-19 patients? Steve, as you know, uh, some of our patients are uh, unfortunately getting very sick and uh, need assistance with breathing, which is why the ventilators have been in the uh, limelight in the media because the biggest concern was not having enough ventilators. And one of the uh, problems is this profound inflammation and permeability that happens in the lung where basically the lungs turn into a sponge and accumulate an abundance of fluid. So if you think about having a sponge and you fill it with water and you let it sit on a table for a long period of time, that water will go to the bottom of the sponge. And if you turn it over, the water will go to the bottom of the sponge, but starting on the new top, if you will. So it's gravity dependent. So what they're doing, and it's, it takes a number of people to turn someone prone, is they will literally, while intubated, the breathing tube is in their lungs, rotate someone 180 degrees going onto their backs or their stomach so that the, the fluid, or even on their side, so the fluid can actually have the chance to move in and out of the lungs in different ways. And um, it's a very challenging thing. Patients have to be very sedated while they're on their stomachs. That could be a longer stay in the ICU. Rush is currently conducting a trial actually looking at the prone position for patients who are not as sick or not yet on a ventilator uh, to see if that actually makes a difference. Uh, but this is a extremely challenging area, but I'm going to tell you that Rush is saving lives every single day by these methods and other methods to manage some of the sickest patients uh, from this terrible virus. It is terrible. And Dr. Cole, we are out of time. Uh, great stuff today. We appreciate it. And uh, I hope that you and your uh, family and uh, patients uh, and partners all stay safe and healthy. Thank you, Steve. You and your family as well. Net proceeds from our show, Sports Medicine Weekly, go to support orthopedic research at Rush through the liveactivenow.org fund. Many thanks to our producer, Shane Reardon. Our coordinating producer is Tracy Torrell. I also want to thank David Cole for managing our website and our business operations. And then there's Samantha Smith from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. For Dr. Brian Cole, I'm Steve Cashel saying so long. Thanks for listening to Sports Medicine Weekly. And we will be back next week. Next Saturday, 8 a.m. Central, with a brand new edition of Sports Medicine Weekly, only on 670 The Score.